I'm Bob Coleman, and we're talking Main Street and the small business lenders who help it grow. Welcome, Katie. Welcome, Lance. Casual Friday hey. edition, middle of June. I can't wait for 2020 to be over. Well, the one the one advantage to the COVID-19 crisis, Bob, is every day is casual uh, when, you're working, <laughs> when you're working when you're working from undisclosed locations. I love it. I love it. Um, for those of you who are new, and by the way, thank you for all your support. Uh, there's a certificate. Be sure and download these and put them in a file, and you can give them to your auditors your regulators, SBA, when they want to know what you're doing for training. And this certainly qualifies, Lance. Oh, it absolutely does. And I, I have to believe, Bob, that in your SBA audits going forward, there's going to be a lot of discussion of how you're training your SBA staff. Yeah, absolutely. And that's um, and uh, that's our passion. And we, uh, we're we wel welcome to give back to the industry that is uh, – and it's definitely blessed me and my family. But let's go to the poll questions. Do you believe the SBA should release the list of lenders who made PPP loans? And the reason why we ask that question is we're going to show a slide that shows the top 15, but we don't have the entire list of how many is it, Katie? 5,000 plus lenders? Yeah, last I heard, it's it's right around there. Well, I, I believe wow. absolutely. I'm right in line with the group, Bob. I believe absolutely. Uh, yeah, federal federal government program, taxpayer dollars, you know, who participated, it's not going to hurt a bank to have their name on a list that says, we helped American small business. And bluntly, if you're a small business and you get a government-backed loan, I think it should be full transparency. So, But here's the list. Obviously, the usual suspects are there. Um, grats to Bank of America and J.P. Morgan for hundreds, <laughs> hundreds of thousands of loans out there. And uh, Lance, what I like are the average loan sizes. Uh, Cross River Bank, I believe they're out of New Jersey. Um, I'm glad to see some of these smaller loans are being funded. Uh, and, and quite frankly, Bob, I do not know that much about Cross River Bank, how big they are, but Kudos to them. Uh, you know, a, I don't know the size of the institution, but 105,000 PPP loans. Unbelievable. Great job, Cross River. Yeah, good for them. And uh, obviously, that's, I mean, that's a lot of work, a lot of servicing, but it's also a nice injection to your bottom line. So I'm, I'm glad to see the industry has embraced this. Um, we're not going to go too much of a history lesson, but there's been programs in the past where the lenders just ignored them. Uh, that's not, not with PPP. Uh, and Bob, the, the interesting thing about this chart, you can take the top two, and they did more dollar volume than SBA did in the year 2019. Excellent observation. You're right. What is that? If my math is right, $53 million, is that... Uh, Billion, yeah, so Katie, billion. I'm sorry. <laughs> there were almost six thousand banks that participated, correct, Katie? Yeah, uh, I think it was somewhere more in the five thousand something range. Okay. But so, let's say five thousand banks participated. Four thousand nine hundred ninety-eight banks also participated, uh, and and the dollar amounts and the number of loans done are just, like I said, once in a lifetime, Bob. Mm -hmm. uh, do we know what the cutoff date on this chart is? What is this through? June 6th. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, let's go to the second poll question. If you are on lockdown, when will your office reopen? We put 2021 that, that there for John Riosti <laughs> <laughs> or uh, Washington, D.C. and uh, – I'm willing to bet, Bob, that the uh, most common answer here is, I don't know. Mm -hmm. You're giving away the answer. There you go. You're right. Oh, no, July. That's, 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 that's encouraging. Yeah. It's just like our full question yesterday, Bob. I was, I was surprised at how many people are actually working in, in their bank branches at this point. Right. The number, numbers were higher than I thought they would be. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. And our third question is, have you seen a fraudulent PPP loan application? 
And Lance, what is the uh, best practice when we have something that we believe is fraudulent? What do we do? Uh, we're going to report it to the SBA's uh, Office of Inspector General. Uh, it, it's hard for there not to be fraud, Bob, because, I mean, you just look at the numbers. Many banks with more than 100,000 applications. It's hard to process that many loans in such a short period of time uh, without having one, two, or more uh, loans that, that – had fraudulent, and, and there were people, Bob, that it's hard to believe that the criminals could queue up faster than the program, but uh, there were people out there that were submitting uh, fictitious applications all across the country. Uh, and again, Katie, kudos to you because you got a lot of work in front of you when they start coming out. <laughs> the Katie with Tucky Full Employment Act, very good. Um, and by the way, just if you want to know the link, just go to their website and just click on it and you send them the information. Um, what's going on with this, Katie? Where we we got guidance. When did this hit, and what does it tell us? Uh, this hit this morning, or at least I saw it this morning, and might have hit last late last night. Um, it's just talking about the uh, establishing maturities of new 7A loans eligible to receive payments under uh, the CARES Act. Um, and basically, what it's saying is that the new loans. Uh, will not get that six months deferment. As of when? As of today or as um, of June 30th? I don't know the exact date. Okay. It looks like, I don't know if it says it here. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, um, I, I, think, I think the main thing they're telling us, Bob, on an SBA 7A loan, just because SBA is paying six months worth of payments, it doesn't automatically take the maximum term of 25 years and makes it 25 years and six months. It's still, it's going to be six months worth of pay. It's going to use a normal 25-year AM, but SBA is making six months worth of payments. I think they're trying to clarify it is not a bonus six months in the term of your SBA loan. No, I'm, I'm glad we're getting better guidance on this. And my attitude on this, Lance, is with all these new PPP lenders, I, I, that's good for the program. It's going to put more lenders exposure to SBA. They are, um, and, and that's going to get more money for Main Street. And I've said, I, I'll go out on a limb, and you guys can correct me if you think I'm wrong. There's no way SBA is going to run out of money this year. If, if they do come up short, they'll simply allocate more money, right? Bob, I think uh, a hot topic industry going forward are LSP because you have an incredible number of lenders throughout the country who had their first exposure or first significant exposure to SBA uh, with the PPP program. They're like, hey, Maybe we should do some 7A loans. Maybe we should get involved in 504. Uh, you know, I think LSPs are going to be what, real What is busy. 504 interest rate these days? It's, it's uh, on the debenture side. Uh, oh, yeah. On the debenture side, the 25-year fix is below 3%. Yeah, I mean, that's – and that's – I mean, that's, that's a great opportunity for you to – take care of your customers. Hey, this is the quote from Treasury Secretary Munchen. Uh, Katie, what was he saying? So on Wednesday's hearing uh, about the implementation of the CARES Act, Munchen told uh, the room that he does not plan on disclosing the names and amounts of the uh, 7 or like the 7A program for the PPP program, because that would be um, proprietary information um, and for the in that in many cases for the sole proprietors and small businesses a confidential information and well, this is something that um has been hinted at before but he's really clarified that um in saying that okay very good let's go through hey, this Bob, was uh, go ahead lance since we're talking about our treasury secretary has he accepted my invitation to complete a forgiveness? <laughs> uh, my Joe. email box inbox was cricket, so uh, the answer is no. But maybe okay. what we'll do, Lance, maybe what we'll do is we'll find someone uh, 
who see we'll we'll give them the form at 10:05 and see by 10:20 if they've completed it. Uh, this is I, in the weeds a calculation. Uh, who wants to tackle this one, Katie Lance? Well, I I, I can jump on it, but basically the 60 percent rule is applying to the loan amount. So 60% of it or $60,000 needs to be used for payroll for full forgiveness. And the other 40% can be used on non-payroll costs. In this example, uh, that would mean $54,000 is the amount that needs to be used on payroll for, for full forgiveness. Uh, so let's say they use 50 on payroll. It's not going to result in no forgiveness at all. Right. It will right. That's the takeaway. On, right. It will result in reduced forgiveness. But basically, the 60-40 rule is applied to, to the loan amount, which it's common sense, but I think they were just clarifying. And clarifying what happens if they don't meet that. Very good. And Bob, I have gotten so many phone calls from my customers, from other people's customers, from small business owners that I have no idea how they got my phone number. And, you know, can I, I had somebody ask me the other day, can I pay my car insurance with my PPP funds? Or I'm getting questions. And I've tried to be real clear, you know, my thoughts on PPP forgiveness is don't try to get cute. Right. Stay with me. Stay within the categories because, because uh, you know, SBA was pretty clear on what you can and can't spend the money on. And and I've gotten tons of questions, Bob, Bob about one guy wanted to pay uh, for his boat tags and boat insurance. And he said, can I do that on the non-payroll expense? I'm like, no. Well, <laughs> I said, you staff, do it. You can do you have it. a staff meeting out there. I don't know. Yeah, you can do it, but it will not be forgiven. It will, it will not be covered. Um, this is a this story as oh my word, is that her mugshot? This yeah, it's one from it's one from a, a DUI that she had, so it's not from this particular case. That's um, Just a couple of things on this. I'm going to turn over to Katie. Number one, this is the first bank foreclosure um this year this cycle as i've said before in 2008 2009 every friday night we would get all the notices of the banks that were seized by the fdic so this is the only one that's been seized um in a, in a couple of years so that's good news what that tells me is this is not 2008 where we had credit crisis credit is available obviously there's a lot of other issues um, the question, what, what accelerant did she use in the boardroom, Katie? And, Bob, I'm, I, I was clapping when you brought this up. It's not because I'm excited that there was bank fraud. It's not that I'm excited that they went to jail. It's just the crazy, ludicrous nature of what happens. Right. This was just one approach that I've just never heard before where, um, well, on May 11, 2019, uh, a little over a year ago, uh, the, there was a fire at this bank in, in Texas, and it's, this is a small town that I believe there's more cattle that live in this town than people. Uh, so everyone hears about this fire and they want to know what happened. Uh, it was primarily in the boardroom uh, because the, they shut the whoever said it shut the doors. So the entire bank did was, did end up with some fire damage, but it was mostly in the boardroom. Well, a few weeks later, um, we find out a little bit more information. Uh, the bank former president ends up arrested. And the reason is, is she admitted that she took a large amount of files, piled them up on a boardroom desk, and set it on fire. And the reason she did that was because she had over 100 uh, fake uh, loans. These aren't PVP loans, obviously. This is a year before that happened. Um, where she was trying to receive over $11 million um, for herself, to, to, for her lifestyle, and also for her boyfriend's business and a couple of friends' businesses. Um, and she had successfully been doing that, but they were up for a review, and this happened the day before the review. 
Uh, so she did admit to doing that, and she is now going to pay a little over eleven thousand or eleven million dollars in restitution. Yeah, it's you know the big question that comes to my mind: every bank has an electronic storage mm -hmm. system for loan documents. I mean. How many, how many banks where if you burn the paper file, would it eliminate any evidence of the line? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's I what I was wondering, so. too. <laughs> I'm just like, there. yes. Yeah, is, is this still, you know, the big question I had when I first read this is, well, they'd still have an electronic record of the loan. Oh, and that's yeah. probably why she got caught. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, it's... Uh... It's a sad, it's a sad story. I mean, we're, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it's, it's sad all around. It's, it, she ruined her career and, um, and probably others hurt. who worked at and the, the bank, bank as well. And the stockholders got hurt and, um, that's too bad. Uh, let's see, uh, Katie, we want you to bring us up the date on pending legislation. Just give an overview so we know where we are in this. Uh, the HEROES Act is officially DOA, correct? Um, so the Senate has officially said that they have no intent to act on this legislation at this time. Uh, they could eventually look at it, but right now, because it uh, focuses on a lot of similar things as the, uh, the Flexibility Act, at least as far as PPP goes, that's probably not going to go into effect. Um, what it did was it uh, extended the covered period a little bit and uh, modified entities that are eligible and things like that, um, which is not included in the Flexibility Act. Um, but it also included a lot of other things, just like the PPP program. It was going to give a lot more funding to other programs, or sorry, the CARES Act. It was going to give a lot more to other programs, such as education and things like that. So I could see it eventually passing, but it's probably going to get changed and adjusted because it doesn't apply as much to the PPP program anymore. Um, we're also still waiting, and I didn't realize this until the other day, on the Small Business Lending Continuity Act, which uh, was going to be a technical correction to prevent 7A from shutting down. The administrator said in the hearing the other day that she didn't believe that it would shut down. So I don't know if they actually need to pass this, um, but it did pass in the Senate almost a month ago and they have the house has not looked at it yet so that's the other big pending thing there are two uh not introduced yet pieces of legislation um one is the prioritized paycheck protection program uh p4 which we talked about the other day in quite detail um that's the blanket forgiveness uh concept and then the simplified ppv forgiveness that's just what i'm calling it that was introduced by an arkansas uh Senator or uh, House uh, oh, Representative, and um, that would simplify the forgiveness application. That has not been introduced yet either. And based on what uh, Mnuchin was saying, he doesn't really want to simplify it too much because uh, all of the things in the application are important for some reason. He said that we need these in the application. So I don't think they want to simplify it too much. That might get tossed out as well. Very good. Well, thank you for the recap. We'll try to do a recap once a week just to bring everyone up to date because I know there's a lot of government acronyms, <laughs> a lot of different <laughs> legislation, and obviously our job is to provide a little bit of clarity. We have a question from um, Wendy. I, I'm sure I botched your name. I apologize. But Lance, let's talk about maturity dates for PPP loans. Uh, you know, maturity date on the loans that were done up through Monday or prior to Monday, uh, your PPP loans had a two-year maturity. After that Monday, what was it, the 5th or the 6th? Uh, but after that date, uh, after the, the fifth, PPP, starting the 6th, yeah. Yeah, the PPP loans are expected to have a five-year term. Uh, one of the things that has made it confusing somewhat uh, is the fact that, that they say the borrowers have until uh, a, a deferment period in their loan, and the deferment period is 10 months instead of the original six months. So this question was more concerning, I, I think, the deferment period. And 
you know, how are they going to make the term of the loan? Well, if you do a loan now, it's a five-year term, and it's going to have a 10-month deferment period. Um, so it's still a five-year loan. The amortization schedule for payments is just going, uh, instead of being, uh, you know, on the original round, it was a six-month deferment, and you determine the payment based on an 18-month amortization. Uh, now it's a 60-month term, and you'll be calculating the payment based on a 50-month amortization. Well, obviously, we're, we're groping in the dark here because we haven't got final guidance. So a lot of we get a lot of these questions. We just don't have the answers. We can give you our best guess. Uh, I thought the guidance would be out by now, but, I mean, it's got to hit soon, right? Well, the thing about SBA that tickly, that it doesn't tickle me, but every time we've gotten a release, it's provided some very clear, very solid information. Some information is just, uh, what, is, what are they saying? Yeah. And, and this is certainly one of the areas that was not real clear. Uh, you know, and, and the other thing that is somewhat challenging, and they re released some information today, and I did not have the ability to read it before coming on, but one of the things that's not real clear is what if you have somebody that you did a two-year PPP loan for, uh, their loan is not forgiven, they can't make the payment, you know, can you extend it to five years? Now, my interpretation of what I read is as long as the, the financial institution and the client agree, you can extend it to five years. Uh, you're not required to. Uh, so there, there are some areas that are still a little gray, a little cloudy, that I hope we get some more guidance to help clarify. I didn't realize you're running over. I got five great questions. I will, if it's okay with you, I'll hold these over till Monday. And um, those are great questions, and we'll get to them then. Um, Katie, thank you very much. Lance, thank you. Thank you for joining us today for Coleman Report Live and for supporting America's Main Street, one entrepreneur at a time. Talk to you Monday. Have a good weekend. Have a good weekend.